So, we, we talk about uh, three peculiarities of dreams and what they mean in yoga. And uh, you know, while there's been a lot of work done on dream and dream analysis and dream therapy and things like that, uh, three things almost invariably happen in dreams. The three things are you can't see your hands or you cannot comprehend your hands. You cannot work light switches. They neither turn off nor on. And the third thing is that the clocks don't work. The hands don't move or the... So, it is regarded as an anomaly. It is regarded as something strange. Uh, but from a yogic perspective, there is something much deeper to it. There is a reason why exactly these three strange things happen. And it is very interesting. Now, the other, the other uh, sort of common, uh, one of the currently very popular explanations is that we are all a computer simulation and dreams are glitches in the program. <laughs> So, whether that is true or not, I don't know, <laughs> but you know, the fact of the matter is your body responds, it excretes the same kind of chemicals exactly as if you are facing the real situation. You are elated, you are depressed, you are angry, you are frightened, exactly as if you are waking. So, the dream state is a very peculiar kind of consciousness which can have very real results, you know, people go sleepwalking and that is also a third kind of, it is not quite a dream and not quite waking and people have even committed murders and things like that, you know, sleepwalking, somnambulism. But the dream state is therefore another kind of reality. What is reality? If, you know, in the matrix that question was asked that, what is reality? It is your brain interpreting impulses, you know, and if you feel that you are seeing something or eating something and your brain is interpreting, maybe you are. <laughs> so, the, in the dream, we are interpreting, our brain is continuing to function and making the same decisions as we would make when we are in waking consciousness. And yet, when we wake up, we know, oh, it is only a dream. So, there was a famous story of the Taoist master who dreamt that he was a butterfly. So, it was a very nice beautiful dream. And then he woke up and since he was a very intelligent man, he was Chuangzi, he then had a thought and he kind of messed up the happiness of his disciples because he told them this story and then said, now what is worrying me is that am I Chuangzi who was dreaming he was a butterfly or is a butterfly dreaming that I am Chuangzi? So, the, in yoga, they always know that imaginary worlds can have just as real consequences as real world. From a karmic point of view, the action that you take, that you do in a dream is almost the same as the action as you do in the waking world. Now, this you didn't know, <laughs> which is why yogis don't like dreams. They want dreams to stop. Because you cannot control what happens in the dream. But the karma plays out exactly the same. In fact, Saint Augustine actually thanked God that I am not responsible for my dreams. That is because he did not know about karma. Yogis actually tell God, why did you do this dirty trick on us? You know? <laughs> because the karma plays out the same way. But if you look at the nature of a dream, because it is another kind of reality, another kind of consciousness, or another kind of interpretation that your consciousness is playing, which is why many yogis, they go so deep into some interior dimension and they never come out. They are so perfectly happy with that imaginary world they have created. There is no difference between that in inner world of creation or imagination and when people have psychotic breakdowns or people become delusional, they are also living in an imaginary world. 
they are convinced that they are seeing aliens or they are reincarnations of famous people or they are talking to famous people or they are getting messages from the other dimension and things like that. The consequences are just as real as if it is actually happening. So, dreams that way, that is why one of the goals in yoga is to stop dreams completely. Because dreams are a, a ongoing harassment of the chitta, you know. The, there is a consciousness is being polluted in that sense. And as you grow in yoga, fortunately, thanks be to God, dreams stop. Or at least become very rare. But these three things, you can't see your hand. You can't see the clock move and you can't turn on the switch on or off. It's very interesting because it, it, it indicates certain aspects of karma and certain aspects of consciousness. You know. Let's take the hands business. What are the hands? The hands are the organs of action, yes? Karma, literally. You can't see your hands means what? You can't see how your karma is playing out. <laughs> you cannot control the karma that is happening. There is more to it, you know, because the left side or the left hand is where the energy influx comes and the right hand is where it, it goes out, which is why all uh, spiritual work lighting the lamp, taking the charnamrit, all done with the right hand. Because the whole nadi flow is different. If you try to take charnamrit from a really energized place and you take it in your left hand, you will basically fry your nadis over there. So the right side, that is why the all the spiritual work at least is done with the with the right. Because there is a certain way that energy goes out of the organism and there is a certain way that energy comes into the organism and the left side is the receptive side or the feminine side and the right side is the masculine or the active side. So that is the reason why, that is the reason why parents, you know, parents would do it because their parents would do it. That is actually why if children tended to be left handed, we would force them to become because there is a certain disruption in spiritual terms later on. In day-to-day -day life, it doesn't make any difference. It might actually help in many ways. Left-handed people tend to be more creative, but they don't tend to be very spiritual. There is a... Now, I know all the left-handed people are going to get angry with me. Okay, you, know, <laughs> you give me examples of left-handed yogis <laughs> or great masters. <laughs> there aren't many, I can assure you of that. It's not possible. The, the prana shakti doesn't flow like that only. But this business of the hands has always fascinated me. You can't see your hands, even though you're doing all kinds of stuff, yes? You're running, you're leaping, you're falling, you're driving stuff, you're <laughs> and nevertheless, you can't see your hands. Now, everybody is going to be examining their dreams. <laughs> it's been examined. It's, it's one of the universal anomalies. People, but because it's not what is real? There is a whole interior dimension. There are whole dimensions where devas are. There are dimensions where rakshasas and danavas are. There are dimensions with lower level entities, the plant dimension, mineral dimension, all kinds of... So what is real? 24 different interlocking spheres of reality. For the yogi, all are equally real, you know. But the dream state is very strange in that it's like inception, you know, where one layer of consciousness beyond another layer of consciousness. No, you wouldn't have a movie if you couldn't show the hands, you know. So <laughs> well, I've always found that part, you know, that we can't see our hands to be, uh, it's a... Uh, sort of intuitive safeguard of the body and the mind and the emotion. You know that you are in another kind of dimension. You are, for whatever reason, because it was not processed in your day-to-day -day work, it was not processed in your day-to-day -day meditation, there is excess psychic energy and that flows out, that flows out as dreams. But 
the activity that happens, the consequence and sequence of actions that take place in the dream state do have a karmic impact. The only good news is it's much less than actually physically doing it in our reality. So the dream state is neither completely an alternative reality nor is it our reality. It is an in-between place which is why it's very dangerous to wake people like that you know when they are in deep sleep we say don't shake a person abruptly out of sleep because they are their whole consciousness and everything is somewhere else and the shock can cause lot of damage but i have always found this business of the hands to be so funny you know because it's like a filter the the human consciousness creates a filter that now of course people will say that we feel but we don't feel which is why it's one of the very ancient yogic techniques it's a technique that Gurdi Jf also had made famous that in your dream you suddenly and abruptly consciously see yourself raise your hand above your head because if you can see yourself do that and you can see your hand then you have broken the hold of that unconscious pattern. You have broken the hold of that unconscious vibration. And your waking consciousness shifts to another level permanently. So it's a very simple thing, exceedingly difficult to attain, but it's a very simple thing that you can't see the organs of karma. You can't see the instruments of karma. It's a, the clock is also interesting because time you can notice in dreams is very fluctuating there is it does not play out in normal time it plays out in all weird it goes super fast it goes super slow it you notice that no so that is why clocks don't work in the dreams because we are in another not even in another dimension of time. We are at a place where time is very fluid. We are at a place where time really doesn't exist. We are in a certain vibrational zone. We are in a certain field where time doesn't exist. Now, enlightened yogis, they are like that all the time. <laughs> time really doesn't ex exist for them. You know, Whole days go by, weeks go by. It's all the same. But, if in the dream you saw the clock move or whatever, then you would wake up or you would, the dream would be shattered. So it is a protection of the dream state that you cannot see the clock. I mean, you can see the clock, but the hands won't move. Or nowadays, digital, that number won't change. You know, it's, it's stuck. It's very interesting that when the movement happened to digital, still that thing of the clocks didn't change. Others we could say it was something about the mechanical movement of the hand, but no, even the, the time doesn't, and most of the time it's very rare to see a, a clock anyways or any kind of timekeeping mechanism anyways in the dream. That itself is a step forward. Precisely because it is not happening in, in time, you know, so when you go deep into yoga, you get into that sense of the fluidity of time. You get into that sense of how easy it is to just look back or look forward. And there is something about Kala Bhairava. You know, Kala Bhairava is actually the, the, the guy who controls time. Usile, that's why he's called Kala Bhairava. You know? Kala, time, he controls. I'll get into Kala Bhairava some other time. Shivratri man. So this is the other interesting thing from... Again, the fact that so much protection has to be given or so much illusion has to be created or so much restriction has to be placed means it's not a very good place to be in, which is why in yoga, they are not interested in dreams. The goal is to come to a state of vibration, your mind, body, emotion, prana, prana is vibrating in a way where you don't have excess and lose psychic energy rattling around that you need to process it when you are asleep. 
and the last one is the business of the light switch again that is very interesting see light is a recent thing yeah it late 18 6 1870 1880 it started uh, light and switches before that yeah so there is a sense of it's artificial illumination those other things are natural illumination you know because we don't realize something that up to 1880 the most important tattva in a sense of course all the electricity that comes also comes from fire because somewhere in a power plant coal is being burnt oil is being burnt or there is nuclear fire in a sense fire is what has made human beings human beings you know human beings what is the difference between us and other animals in that we consciously work with fire we keep fire to protect us to keep us warm fire is what has enabled us to live in all kinds of inclement weather we can go anywhere even to the north pole animals don't come against us because we have fire then we learned how to cook the very first word this is most significant the very first word in the Rig Veda is Agni the most sacred scripture the most vibrant scripture the most powerful scripture of all time the very first word that it begins with is fire because fire is what has made us humans Manipuraka that is why from the Manipura the evolution happens you know? the fire is what transforms so the light switch is not natural the light switch is an artificial form of illumination and again whether you turn it on or you turn it off instantly the illusion will shatter instantly that so kaam nahi karta hai agar wo kaam karta hai if it works then the either the illumination will stop or the illumination will cut out but in either cases the reality that your mind has so carefully that your subconscious has so carefully created for you that reality fragments and shatters i don't know how people used to dream in the days of fire and a world lit only by fire you know because the illumination used to come from fire from lamps from torches, from diyas, from that was the common illumination of the world and that is all of human history and culture is illumination by fire and we are living in an odd, uh, historically an odd place where the illumination is of still fire at the core but one step removed. You know, so somewhere the subconscious knows that because these processes are not from the modern mind these processes of dream processes are from the the actual reptilian mind perhaps you know it comes from that very deepest layer of animal consciousness because it's very obvious your pets dream animals dream you, know, you can see the dog dreams it wags its tail it you know it barks it whatever <laughs> it's very obvious that they are dreaming and you can watch the eyeballs move that that tells you that so somewhere the fact that the switch is an abnormality is very well understood that the switch is a very strange uh, way to live and you know our entire natural rhythms have been screwed up with this constant presence of light you know, because if you don't have this constant stimulation of the artificial light you will start falling asleep very naturally it's because as soon as it is evening we have this artificial light not natural light if it is flame it would be different candle lantern whatever it would be different because of this constant stimulation by the artificial light our entire rhythms go off but in the dream state which is from a more ancient kind of consciousness or a more intrinsic kind of consciousness that light business is not since they do not comprehend it they don't allow it yeah. 
time also i mean human beings would always tell time because you know depending on the time of day and we were always trying to make some kind of clock or anything but as soon as a machine was created the consciousness rose up against it so it's very interesting to me i I, I was reading about this and the person of course was arguing that we are living in a computer simulation. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about how the mind functions, he doesn't know anything about yoga, he doesn't know anything about layers of consciousness. You know, they are, they are always seeking a, a mechanistic answer, you know, it's always a machine answer to it. And we are biological organisms and there is a whole non-rational, non-linear way in which these things are processed. It was uh, very, very fun. But this immediately showed me that what is important, you know, the time is important, karma is important, and illumination is important. These are the three things that the dream state is having trouble with, you know. So, these three things become instantly important. What are you doing? How long have you been doing or you know, do you have the time to waste? The fact is that since it is being blocked, therefore it is of value. You know, it is not a higher consciousness, it is a lower consciousness and all levels of consciousness defend their existence. They do not want that you will break through to a higher level of consciousness and then there will be no, no more dream state. Because you know, a lot of your organism gets nourished by that dream state, sometimes other beings also start drawing on you, all that is complex, leave it. But just basically, if a setting exists in your body, it will fight to maintain its existence. And when we do especially something like our eight spiritual breaths or even we learn something like sacred India tarot, because it is an energetic shift, that inertia pushes very badly, you know, to just to preserve itself, it is just basic human Every state of being, every condition of being, it prefers stasis, it prefers to be as it is. So, this is a way of protecting, this is a way of the unconscious to protect itself. You know, because karma, you can shift your karma, you can shift your concept of time, you can shift how you use time, you can shift how you live in time. And you can understand the true nature of illumination and light, which of course, you know, for those in the earth spiritual breath, you don't need to tell people about light. <laughs> the whole thing is light, 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 you know, because light is a central transforming thing, you know. It was so fascinating to me. Have you noticed, by the way, that in our affirmations of the earth spiritual breaths, in the smaranas, the remembrances, the word dream doesn't exist anywhere? Because the dream state is such a wrong turn for consciousness. So, you know, some people are very happy. I dream such a lot. I have such wonderful dreams. <clears throat> Poor people. <laughs> I'm like, I deeply sympathize with you, you know, because to stop that is going to take time. I am so relieved that only rarely dreams happen. Dreams have stopped. Oh, God. Thank you. You know, like. The, the, it's not a good sign, it's not a good sign because it means that your consciousness is not in control of your organism. Your control of your organism is partial. We have one of the affirmations, whatever the creator is I am, now I will to see the creator at work in the temple of my body. What we mean is that creator means the life process. It doesn't mean a particular kind of devta, it doesn't mean some kind of jolly Santa Claus sitting up in heaven and showering gifts, you know, because we are praying, mm -hmm. no? which is the idea of that movie PK, I mean, stupid movie, dumbass movie, okay, let that be. You know. The life process, if we understand, if we understand 
that we are the nature of the life process, then the dream stop. It is because we are dissociated from the life process, it is because we are not healthy. Optimally healthy people do not require dreams because dreams are one way of processing. It is one way of psychic excretion, you know, the stuff that you did not process, did not deal with, did not bring to resolution, did not have some kind of emotional understanding of it, it has to come up in your dream because it is or some aspect of your life you are not paying attention to and it keeps breaking through in the dream because it is trying to bring it to your, but it is a primitive side of consciousness and trying to work with that side is not right or rather it is not recommended, it is not recommended because there are higher better vibrations which will completely transcend and flush that. So this was a, a really uh, sort of, to me it was a very, very interesting article because I realized that when you are deep in yoga, everything can be looked at, you know, that is what uh, Aurobindo said, all life is yoga, everything can be looked at from the yogic perspective and instantly it falls into place accurately and correctly, you know. You do not have to start hypothesizing some alien race that is running us through the computers, you know. We are all Neo or maybe Morpheus. <laughs> That's what one or two young boys call me, you know. <laughs> you are Morpheus. <laughs> you, you fed us the red pill and unplugged us. <laughs> I'm like, you promoted yourself to Neo already. <laughs> <laughs> Already you are the one, when you calling me Morpheus, what you are saying is I am the one. <laughs> but it is just very simple, you see, once you understand the, the workings of the mind, once you understand the workings of the being, these things become exceedingly simple to understand. You do not need to think about it, it is just clear. As soon as I saw that I am like, okay, I know what is going on. It was, but it is very fascinating insight as to what we are trying to accomplish in yoga. You know? Very, very fascinating. Because those three things are so clear. You need that illumination, you need karma, you need action and you need time. The right approach towards time. It was a, really fun it was. You know? <laughs> It might be that God has run us as a computer simulation. I am not saying anything about that. All things are possible. Why not? You know, our gods are supposed to do Leela, you know, have fun. <laughs> they might have decided, okay, one universe, <laughs> let's run a program and see what happens. You know? <laughs> and that's what we are doing. Quite possible. <laughs> I don't put anything beyond Shiva, you know, he is completely crazy. <laughs> can, that's just the kind of crazy idea that will appeal to him, you know. And his wife Kali, you know her. So, you know. <laughs> so our mother and father of the universe are not very reliable, you know. <laughs> they are capable of doing anything, you know. <laughs> but from a yogic perspective, we don't need to uh, you know, to kind of hypothesize some such strange thing. It's very clear what it means, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sarvam <laughs> Shamyam. <laughs>